wanted to give you some of my basic ideas of my approach, what I call the method of complexity, on which I'm working since more than 20 years, and try to give you some ideas of what, what is my approach. Using those two cases, I will be very short. Of course, the idea of complexity doesn't mean that this has not to be a simple approach. Complexity is not the opposite of what is simple. Complexity means that you recognize that systems use many, many different ways to cope together and to find out good survival strategies. So the idea of complexity starts from the combination of different kinds of observation that we do in our cases. So the first thing that I try to do whenever I study a remedy, whenever I study a substance, whenever I study a patient, of course, according to what just um, Jeremy said, I totally agree with him. I'm not thinking about those kind of things when a patient is in front of me, not at all. But when I have to try to find out if this was a good case or not, whenever I start to study remedies, that I don't know at all or which I would like to improve in my understanding, what I try to find out is always this. The reason why a certain substance entered in our history of homeopathy, please remember that even if Anemann, which I absolutely love and esteem, did a very, very interesting, excellent, fantastic work at the beginning of the story of homeopathy, the great, great majority of the remedies that he used were known since hundreds of years before. If you open books of Mattioli, of many other fantastic doctors of that time, if you give a look to what is written about sepia, to what is written about calcarea carbonica, to what is written about vipera, and many other fantastic remedies that we know in homeopathy that animal proved, doing at that time a scientific work, that now can be considered empirical, but at that time it was very scientific. Many of those substances were known. So for me, it's very interesting to try to understand why certain kind of substances became that important in the history of medicine in our country. Because of course, the Materia Medica in the Mesopotamic area, the Materia Medica in Western countries, because you know that animal was German, is completely different from what is another part of the world. If probably Animan was in India or was in China from the very beginning, our material medical would be done with many, many more animal remedies, for example, because their way of working comprehends and knows a lot about all the substances. What I try to do is to try to find out a possible comparison, a possible coherent similarities between the way a substance used to exist, to is what it is. Don't forget that it's easier to think about certain kind of animal remedies and certain kind of plants in order to find out what is the strategy for this substance to exist, how it is. It's not just a philosophical issue. The idea of vitalism starts from that observation. But, you know, the idea that even crystals even rocks, even all these kind of pieces of our beautiful planet are still in some way alive, was very clearly recognized by many other medicines of the past, even if for us the idea of living is something very different. And of course, all these two concepts must, and I insist on that, must really be resonant with good clinical experiences. I'm collecting my cases since 91 using my computer, and I am a little bit um, obsessive in writing down whatever my patient says verbatim. So in all those years, I did this work for around 10,000 cases, and it's all written here <laughs> in the memory of my computer. And I'm extremely fastidious with my standards. So the cases that I used to present in my books, in my seminars here, and whenever I teach, are only cases where I have at least a follow-up of four or five years, and when I have at least four or five cases of the same remedy with the same kind of follow-up, and I can find out coherent symptoms in all of those cases. Otherwise, I'm not saying that I can work like this always, not at all. I change remedies many times. I have a lot of patients where I can do nothing, but I think that all this one, 
are the most important in terms of a kind of pure prescription, and those are the ones which I use for my additions in the repertory and many other works.